Hi guys, a happy new year to you all. Let's continue our gallery of portraits in the styles of well-known painters. Today, we follow the suggestion of Sumojit Das and will explore Picasso's African period. Don't hesitate to comment with the name of which painter you would like to study next. I will try my best to decompose their style for you. So, Picasso was the major art figure of the 20th century. Not only did he do thousands of paintings spanning across almost all genres and style, but he also dared to venture into new techniques and style. Born in 1881 in Spain, he was an absolute prodigy. He sold his first painting when he was eight, and many of his teenage works can rival the great classic masters in terms of detail, lights, and color. To the point that when he reached 13, his father, who was also a painter and art teacher, decided that the student has surpassed the teacher and that he would stop his own painting career. Once again, his early work is very classical, as Picasso spent hours studying Goya and Velázquez in the Prado Museum. However, in 1905, things are about to change. Picasso discovers African art and is mesmerized by it, especially the tribal masks. He tries to infuse the stylized shape and earthy color into his work. This is the beginning of his African period. Eventually, it will lead him to cubism and more abstract techniques, but this is a discussion for another video. So, let's see what are the seven steps to a Picasso's African period painting. Why, why always seven? So, I'm working on a canvas board with acrylic paint, and my palette is as follow. Yellow ochre, Venetian red, red oxide, raw umber, cyan, black and white. You know what is always my first step? Tint your canvas. I'm using a very diluted red oxide for this. I managed to get my son to sit for me a few minutes. Sketch the face roughly with black. The idea is to balance the composition. We are not going into too much detail at that stage. I wanted to elongate his neck a little bit to show that he's actually very tall and to contrast with the roundness of his face. Based on this first sketch, you now divide the face into shapes. You need to think like a sculptor for this. Imagine, in 3D, where each plane of the face starts and ends. Where do they join? Simplify and stylize your sketch. Keep a likeness to your portrait or not. What is the essence of that face? In a way, you have to be a bit of a caricaturist, too. Now, the shadows. This is a bit tricky. Don't think about the colors, but about the darkness. You can do what I did, take a picture of your palette and turn it into a black and white photo, if it helps. Use the lighter color where the light is hitting the face and the darker ones for the deep shadows. Mix your colors to fill the shapes we have just drawn. You 
you should end up with a patchwork that maybe looks a bit weird, but gives a pretty good 3D effect when you look at it in black and white. Now, you can apply a background color, let's say of a neutral color that you have mixed from your palette. Give some nuances and variations. We will come back to this later. Time to give some texture. With a fine brush, do a very minute work of cross-hatching over the whole portrait, and yes, that includes the background. This allows you to rectify some of the lighting, sometimes blur the line between two colored shapes, but above all, it gives some unity to the whole portrait. Use black, white, but also some of the intermediate colors from your palette. Now is the time to introduce a light blue that will contrast with the earthy color of the beginning. Picasso used it mostly in his background, but you could do some hatching on the face or the shirt. By now, you can forget about your subject and just have graphic fun. The texture, the organic matter of the painting takes a life of its own. Finally, the little detail. Revise a contour, adjust a color here and there. Now is the time to see the painting as a whole and give the final touch-ups. And just like that, you have made yourself a Picasso-styled portrait inspired by his African period. Thank you all. You are now more than 500 following us. Don't hesitate to like, share, comment our videos and let us know which painter you would like to study next. Cheers and see you soon.